these broken clocks I Hello, 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 guys. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are you guys? Happy Tuesday, y'all. <laughs> I hope you're having a great start of your week. Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. Please also comment in the comment section and in the chat. Say hello. Let me know that you're listening. <laughs> and as always, if you have any tips or suggestions, Please send those to Lexis Exodus Channel at gmail.com. Also, shout out to my moderators who are always holding it down. Hey, Moonweaver. Hey, Nelly P. Hey, Mina, Ruby, Lexi, um, Hurricane, Monohina. Um, I appreciate you. Also, big shout out to y'all who have been donating, y'all. Oh my gosh, I feel so flattered. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all, that means so much to me. This is a passion project for me. So I truly do this out of love for black women, but I certainly do appreciate all the encouragement and support. So shout out to Brent over at uh, Roadrunner89. Um, shout out to you for donating. I appreciate you. Um, you guys, if you are not privy to his content, he is awesome. Um, check out his channel. I recently get was a guest a star on his panel. So check that out. Thank you again. Also, thank you to Mocha Mommy. Big shout out to Diane. I saw your super chat and I do not take that support lightly. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Also, shout out to Lena, Divested Queen, Natural Nubian Princess, and all the others who've donated. I truly appreciate you all so much and thank you for your support. Also, quickly before we get started, because we know Nakers are kings of gaslighting and they like to dish it, but they can't take it. Please, if um, just in case something happens to this channel, please follow my backup channel, Lex X. That's L E X E X. Um, and it'll also be linked in the description below. Now, let's get to it. This is another installment of my daily series called The Blackistan Zoo, where we profile the nakers, animals, and crusty creatures in Blackistan. Um, we're doing this series daily throughout the month of June at 6.30 ET. So let's get started. So today we're going to talk about the wigger, y'all. <laughs> Um, and this is another one of my most highly requested videos. So I'll shout out just a few subscribers who requested this. Um, AL, who emailed me, I won't say her name, I'll just say her initials. Thank you for the suggestion and also all the examples. Pinku is a subscriber who suggested this. Thank you for that. Zacomo7, Sunshine Jazz, and a slew of other, <laughs> other followers requested this. Um, so thank you again. I'm really, really appreciate, appreciative of all the suggestions. So we're going to profile the Wigga today for your request. <laughs> so their appearance, so your Wigga has a uh, pale skin, but with tattoos. So they're covered in tattoos, but oftentimes they'll wear gold teeth. Um, you'll also see them donning braids, dreads, um, and then you're you're also going to see them in ape apparel. So they'll wear the baggy jeans um, with their ass out. They'll wear the um, goldy jewelry, rings, necklaces, chains, things like that, um, and other items associated with, with ape uh, appearance and apparel. Um, so their behavior. So your wigger, they're Tyrone identified brads who are white. However, they surround themselves with nacre, so they inadvertently get indoctrinated into this toxic Blackistani behavior and culture. And although they are brides, they surround themselves with nicknogs, so they will talk like them, um, they'll think like them, and they'll behave in the same problematic behavior. Um, so you'll see him oftentimes speaking with Naker Bonics, um, and he'll use Blackistan colloquialisms. Um, like I said, they'll, they'll wear lots of tattoos, they'll have on their skin, very gaudy jewelry, uh, gold teeth. Um, oftentimes you'll see them wearing designer clothing that they can't afford, like Nick Nogs. They'll wear the ball caps, Jordans, and all of that extra um, other 
uh, extra excessive uh, clothing and apparel that's associated with with makers. So wiggers are very problematic, y'all, especially for the divested woman, because we know as divestors, um, we it took us a while to, um, you know, reverse that brainwashing and that indoctrination that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, exposed to from birth. So the divested woman will finally escape that. Then she'll unsuspectingly get with a wigga thinking that she'll experience different treatment when in actuality, uh, these wiggers are simply Tyrones with pale skin. So they share the same problematic pathology. Um, they'll also lack resources. They're womanizers who pump and dump. Um, and they also oftentimes abuse and mistreat women. And that's because they are literally copying and mimicking exactly what they see uh, displayed and illustrated by Black Astani men. Um, so yeah, it's very important to understand and to be leery of the wicker and not to be fooled simply because he's a brad, because you don't want to go through all the trouble um, and all the work and all the um, you know self-work and all of the progression um, that comes with divesting and escaping this toxic community just to divest um, and then end up experiencing the same implications that occur um, that you would experience when you're dating makers. So notable wig is Chet Hanks, um, who we will talk about as we get further along in the show. Also Eminem, who is a well-known wigga and who was surrounded by knickers. Um, therefore, he was influenced by the Black Pakistani culture and toxic behavior. Also Gary Owens, who we'll talk about as we progress in tonight's show. Um, in addition, do y'all remember Britney Spears' ex who ended up getting, what's her name? What's, what's that girl's name? Char, I want to say, Char Jackson, ended up getting her pregnant um, and then abandoning her uh, to run off with with uh, Britney Spears. That's also a notable wicker um, that really illustrates and epitomizes this uh, problematic um, animal, this problematic uh, pathology. So first off, I want to quickly just uh, share with you guys some um, the prototype of your typical Wicca. So we'll quickly look through quite a few photographs of these men. And that way you know um, to be aware and know exactly what to look for when divesting and you know to stay away from these men. So let's look at our first picture of the wigger. So here um, we have this guy uh, sporting cornrows, and it, it looks ridiculous. It, it really looks painful. Um, and here's my thing. Um, this does not look good when uh, Black men wear this. So not quite sure why this man thought that, you know, it made sense for him to sport this style either. Um, it looks awful. But this is your typical wigger, and this is what you want to look look for to avoid. Um, here's another one. So you see, I talked about how they'll have tattoos on their face. They'll also have like similar haircuts as uh, Nakers. Um, you see, he has Jordans on. Um, he has shoes on that probably um, are worth more than what is currently valued in his account. This is also typical for um, your, your normal wicker, your typical uh, wicker. Um, here's another one. Again, we have the tattoos that I talked about, um, the hat. They're literally mimicking what they see Nakers do. And Nakers look clownish. So um, this is this is them doing almost like a um, like satire. You, do you get what I mean? Like it's almost like it's a just um, a cartoonish prototype of what they see. They see Nick Nas. Um, illustrating this ridiculous behavior. They see them um, having money phones and sporting stacks of money. They see them with their underwear showing. Um, they see them wearing tattoos. And it's like, oh, okay, if I want to be like a Nick Nog, this is what I do. Um, you know, notice that you won't see these wickers uh, establishing resources or building or cultivating assets because they know that's not what Nakers do. So to mimic a Naker, you just look as ridiculous as possible. Here's another one. Uh, like I said, the tattoos everywhere on his face, on his neck, and on, on his hands. 
Um, here's another guy wearing champion slides, the same tattoos. I'm telling you, really, like the top three traits of your wicker are the same top three traits that you would see for your typical naker. Um, you're going to see the tattoos. You're going to see um, the gaudy uh, clothing, so name brand apparel. This happens to be champion, which isn't as bad as some of the, like the Louis Vuitton and things that they uh, spend money on that they can't really afford. But they'll wear like logos everywhere. They're, everything's very ostentatious. Everything's very ridiculous, um, very loud, and very flashy. Um, let's see what else we have here. See, I mean, it's it's almost like it's almost like um, these people, other groups of men, all they. It's almost like they can go to a store uh, called, you know, Nignog Costume Store, Nignog Apparel. Literally, the prototype to look like a naker, to look like a nignog. All you have to do is wear oversized clothing, show your underwear, um, wear some name brand shoes, wear some um, overpriced jewelry that costs more than your net worth, uh, wear a hat fit low. And there you go, your average naker. So uh, let's look at a few more. Um, we see him with two sleeves holding up money. Um, another wig. Uh, this one, this one is a wig with a mug shot. Um, and like I said, you'll see them. Um, they're ape identified. So they'll have shady arrest records. You'll see them literally mimicking and copying the prototype of your naker. They'll have felonies. Um, they'll be ex-convicts, like just like the Nick Nogs that they surround themselves with. Um, let's keep going and look at a few more then um, we'll keep moving. So another thing that we'll notice with Nick Nogs is that they refuse, they refuse to grow up. So like I've said before, um, I've said this previously and I'll say it again. So Nakers are stuck in this unending state of childhood and of adolescence. Um, and so they'll oftentimes be 50 years old, 60 years old, still dressing like teenagers and still dressing like college age children. Um, so we see the wiggle ones to mimic that so he recreates and copies that behavior as well so we see this guy he looks like a senior citizen he has a gray mustache and beard and we see him dressing like a 19 year old as well with the tattoos on his face same with this guy. Um, he has a receding hairline. He looks like someone's papa. Um, and but still he he's dressed, he's stuck in this unending state of childhood, just like the Nate are. So he he's dressed. Um, he's dressed like like a child. <clears throat> Have a few more. See this this wigger has braids. Um is wearing um, a colorful shirt with a cartoon on it. Again, we see this prepubescent behavior in these men who are um, well past their prime. Um, another one with a wigger, like I said, um, the wigger's goal is to totally recreate and copy and mimic the behavior that he thinks is trendy because nakers have made that trendy. And so it's not like, it'd be one thing if it was like, oh, nakers are known for um, marrying women and treating them like they're golden and being great fathers and spouses. No, Nick Nogs are known for carrying Glocks around and for shooting people um, and for getting around arrested and for uh, committing felony. So this is why you'll see the Wicca try to copy that same behavior. So yeah, so like I said, you'll see uh, Wiggas copying and mim mimicking problematic behavior that they see the apes illustrate. So I wanted to show this video that really epitomizes that and um, your behavior and the innate um, behavior and pathology of your Wicca. And then I want to chat. So let's watch this. Honestly, really hate to break it to all y'all niggas, bruh. Just because I wasn't on Snapchat for like two weeks, I don't even know how long it was. It was for five minutes. But just because I wasn't on Snapchat, nigga, don't mean I ain't shot that with a glass still, nigga. Just know you little ass niggas. Anytime you ready. Anytime you ready. Okay, so do you see this idiot? 
So he's clearly inebriated. Um, he, but he, here's the thing. He's probably grown up around a lot of Tyrones. And so he's toting his gun just like Glocktavius. Um, so this is your typical Wigan. This is not what you want. You do not want to go through all the self-work and all the self-improvement and all the level up work and therapy and all the unlearning um, that you've been indoctrinated with in Black Assyrian just to turn around and date this. It's just to turn around and date Tyrone um, with white skin. You, you do not want to do that. Okay. Um, another important thing to denote is that um, wickers will oftentimes have gay tendencies like nakers. Um, so I wanted to really illustrate that point with this video as well. And then I want to talk through. So let's watch this. Let's watch that again, if you guys, it happened quickly, but I want you to watch these two wickers illustrating their gay tendencies, just like the nakers like to do. Okay. So again, so nakers are a predominant part of the LGBT community. So this wigger wants to replicate that behavior and do the same. And that's why we see him kissing um, another guy on camera listening to trap music. That's what they do. Okay, so another thing that we'll see, another characteristic that's common in Wiggas is, you know, they know, they they say, hey, well, I know that Tyrone um, is, is good at rapping, and I know he's also good at throwing a ball, so how about I take a stab at rapping? So we'll see lots of Wiggas who are, are rapping, lots of brats who um, also like to be struggle rappers as well. Um, so let's look at this first Wigga artist who really illustrates and epitomizes the rapping wicca. particular wigger he sees Nick Noggs disrespecting and degrading black women so he'll do the same and like I said um you know though they think I think that Nickers really think that they're more um discreet with their problematic behavior but they're not the world sees it so um wiggas and other groups of men will literally say hey you know we know that all Nick Noggs can do well and all that they can master is committing crime um they might be good at throwing a basketball or dribbling a basketball or throwing a football um, I also sometimes are good at rapping. So if I want to be like your typical Tyrone, then I'm I'm going to do the same. So here, there we have it. Um, and here's another uh, Wicca who attempts to rap and really illustrates that problematic behavior. This tape dropping soon, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We want nigga drop a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Deep throw, deep throw. I don't love her, I just wanna put it deep throw. I don't trust her, I just wanna put it deep throw. I'm in the trap, all my niggas know the cheat codes. Deep throw, nigga deep throw. I don't love her, I just wanna put it deep throw. In the trap, all my niggas know the cheat codes. Trap, all my niggas know the cheat codes. Suck up on it, use a lot of spit. I'm a gang nigga in the hood. I be flipping bricks, getting rich. Keep a chopper and I got a stick with a grip. And I keep a llama, we gon' let it hit. I got Gucci. <sighs> Do y'all see this stupid ish? 
Do y'all see this? So this Tyrone identified Wigga is cussing and using inappropriate language. Hopefully my channel, um, it doesn't, YouTube doesn't get alerted that he's using foul language. But here we have it. And I bet you his poor parents are probably so disgusted. Brad's parents are so disgusted by this behavior. They're thinking, hey, we, you know, we sent him to the finest private schools that money can buy. Um, you know, we work to provide him a beautiful home in the suburbs with that white picket fence, um, you know, just for him to turn around and act like a dummy. Just for him to turn around and act like a, a stupid, dumb ape. And he's talking about Deep Throat. This is what he's singing about. And that's because he's seen uh, Nick Dogs do this shit commonly. He always sees this. He's seen them call women bees and hoes. So all he, he's doing is naturally, if you want to be like a Tyrone, you'll mimic that to toxic behavior. Um, let's look at another rapping Wicca who il further illustrates this uh, problematic, toxic behavior um, and who is also a struggle rapper. It's called You a Thought, is what the song is called. You a Thought. or y'all and again you can't write this stuff you can't make this stuff up it's it like i said tyrone's read from all all the same script they all read from the same script they all commit crime they all do drugs and that's why you see this man who wants to be like a tyrone copying that same behavior so he's also going to tote a gun around like Octavius. Um, he's also going to have tattoos on his face. He's also going to demean and degrade women talking about thoughts and getting top. Um, this boy has clearly been corrupted by Blackistan men um, and Black women. You should want no parts of this. And I'm sure he, he also, just because this is typical of that behavior, he also probably has several baby moms that he's abandoned. He probably has an infected peen um, and probably has an overdrawn bank account, too. Okay, so let's look at this last wig of rapper that really illustrates what I'm talking about. And this one looks like he could be um, learning disabled. <laughs> I'll just say that. So uh, let's watch this and then we will chat. Well protected and respect, they treat me like a prez. I be flexing on the gram and they mad they want me dead. Don't run up on me lacking, bitch. One in the head, he ran up trying to box. I left the t shirt red. Number one, Twigga, I go stupid like a spetty trying to diss me on the net. I'm like, boy, is you the feds? I don't chase hoes, all I'm chasing is the shed. I be knocking ops off like the monkeys on the bed. So again, we see this wigger doing the same as Nakers, objectifying women, um, having them half naked in music videos, burnishing guns. Um, and I bet you the interesting thing is I bet you a lot of Nakers would watch this and be offended. So I've actually heard quite a few of your so-called woke Tyrones and Hoteps and, um, you know, woke Nick Noggs who, um, you know, they'll react to stuff like this defensively. But it's like, well, what do you expect? What do you expect? Um, these workers are going to say the N-word casually because you do. These wiggers feel comfortable objectifying and disrespecting Black women because you do. Um, and not only that, you profit off of it and you become millionaires by making songs like this, disrespecting and degrading Black women. So they're just following the blueprint that you wrote. Okay, so enough of that. So uh, let's move on. Um, I want to get into the meat and potatoes of this Wigga video to really illustrate the problematic behavior of your Wigga um, and why it's so important to stay away from him, especially romantically as a divested Black woman. So let's talk about Gary Owen. <laughs> so Gary Owen, uh, the comedian um, who got his his stardom, um, it originated um, 
um, within the black community, within the Chitlin circuit. Um, he is married to a black woman. He's extremely successful, very highly visible. Um, and this situation could have resulted in a beautiful divestment story. Um, but because he is a Wigga and he surrounds himself with toxic Tyrones, things quickly went left. So Kenya and Gary Owen are getting a divorce after 18 years. Um, and Kenya recently spoke out um, publicly about the divorce and also hints at cheating allegations. So let's look at this. Um, so she, yeah, so she submitted a quite a few Instagram uh, posts. Um, so let's see. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, so she says she tried to be quiet out of respect for her kids. Uh, she talks about Claudia Jordan saying that she has her on one this morning. Um, she even kind of implies that Gary might have had a, an affair with Claudia Jordan, wh who is also a comedian. She's also been on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, she says 23 years together. Gary didn't have shit, but a raggedy pickup and good credit, no place to live. Dallas, Dallas, Texas, your old ass should have known better. Um, we are married, not separated. Married Gary Owen. All the energy you spent lying, acting, and creating a fake narrative for these bees that want to be me. Um, and she just keeps going. Um, and she talks about um, how she was with him before the fame. Um, like I said, she mentioned that, you know, she met him when he was homeless and only had a raggedy pickup two decades ago, y'all. And like I said, she implied that, um, you know, their marriage is ending because of cheating allegations, which is just like a nignog. So Gary Owen is uh, obviously very indoctrinated into this toxic Blackistan mentality, this nignog mentality, uh, because that's what happens oftentimes. So you'll meet a nignog when they're broke, uh, you'll build him up, and then once he makes it, he's off to the next chick. So this is typical Wigga Naker behavior. He's been around Nakers way too often in the industry. We'll see him around these apes. So he surrounds himself with these nignogs. And so, of course, he is illustrating this uh, type of problematic behavior accordingly. Um, so another post recently um, Kenya created also discussing how Gary left her penniless. So let's look at that. So, and this is in response to Gary Owen posting a picture on Instagram that says that he's the breadwinner. Okay, so this triggered Kenya. So in response, um, she says, you know, I've never gone to the media. The media goes looking for the paperwork. I've allowed you to tell your family, friends, and fans any false narrative that you want or need it to be about us, the relationship and our kids, because I don't care or feel a need to defend or explain myself. You and I know what it really is, but when you go and make these dumb, passive aggressive posts in these insensitive ass t-shirts i am triggered and now you have my attention um you haven't supported us since april 1st nothing nada zero not electric water gas not insurance not medical dental life car house and etc not groceries not maintenance for the house not the gas or maintenance of the cars not the platinum card i got for us because you wanted one and you couldn't get one on your own <sighs> not the cell phone you have for 23 years. Instead, you just got another phone number and didn't pay the bill. All of our bills are attached to my social and credit. You have paid the $4,500 mortgage that is attached to your social and credit for the first time, but that is it. You haven't seen your daughter in over six and a half months. You haven't seen your son in over four months. This is your choice. You do remember us, right? I guess we were useful when your content was needed or when I allowed you to live your best life while I stayed back home with our kids, the house, and taking care of the business. This is what it is after 23 years of being the only one to have your back 100% of the time. Wow. The new you is a mofo. Do you even recognize right anymore? You've shown lack of care for me, maintaining the financial stability and so emotional support of our kids. I'm the only person that has protected you and you treat me like this says more about your character than any of your antics. You are not a good guy. So cut it out and get a shirt that says deadbeat. I will let you get back to living your best life, lying, clout chasing, side chicks and looking for a black celebrity friend group. Child, and that's on who? <laughs> that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb. So Kenya, she clapped back. 
she clapped back. Um, and this is really, really interesting. So that was a mouthful. So where do we want to start? So she talks about um, how the bills are in her name and her social. That's just like an eggnog to have bad credit. So Gary Owen has been surrounded by so many apes that he's even um, progressively has ruined his credit. Um, she also talks about after she sacrificed her career for him, she devoted her life to him. He left her high and dry, um, which is normal for these eggnogs. That's what they do. They'll marry black women. And then once they're successful, once they get money, then um, all of a sudden they're, they're gone. Um, they're absentee fathers. So she talks about how, you know, he's a deadbeat dad. Um, and I know that he clapped back and went on Wendy Williams show and said that the kids are grown. But here's a post that I found of his daughter from last year. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, so here's this post where he congratulates his daughter about being accepted into college. Um, so here's my thing. She was just a senior in high school last year. And now she's a freshman in college. Sorry, that's not grown. That's not grown. It's typical for men who are men, uh, men who are alpha men to still contribute to their uh, child's livelihood while they're in college. Uh, they'll certainly continue to support them. They'll help with tuition, room and board, food, things like that, especially when you're a multimillionaire like Gary is. Uh, but he hasn't, according to Kenya. Um, he he hasn't. And Gary even has publicly admitted on the Wendy Williams show that he's not supporting or contributing to any of this because they are quote unquote grown. That is that is your your toxic Blackistan Naker mentality. Um, she's off to college, she's turned 18, F it, she's on her own, uh, forcing her to fend for herself. They don't want to um, you know, they don't want to give um generational wealth or to um help give their children a leg up. So it, it's very clear that he's been corrupted and uh, fully indoctrinated to this Blackistan Naker mentality. This is very odd. This is what Nakers do. They rarely are breadwinners. They're rarely providers. And the odd chance that they are and that they do, uh, they don't believe in loyalty or value marriage. So they'll abandon you as soon as they want to move on to the next chick, including the children. Um, Nakers coined the phrase, F them kids. Um, and this wigger is simply modeling that problematic behavior. Um, and this is why Black women, divesters, we cannot entertain wiggers. Definitely don't want to marry them. Definitely don't want to have children with them because they are just like the nignogs that we are divesting from. So this last uh, wigger I want to talk through is uh, Chet Hanks. Um, so he is Tom Hanks' son. And he, let me pull up a picture of him because he is a cutie pie and he fooled me too. Um, I even, if you guys have been supporting, yeah, here he is. If you guys have been supporters of the show um, since the beginning, you know that I even included a clip of him talking about it's a white boy summer before in a previous video because he's cute. He's handsome. Um, but he's a wigger um, and he surrounds himself with nakers. So it didn't take long for his problematic pathology and problematic behavior to be exposed. So <laughs> most recently, this fool has been blasted for asking a fan, a woman for $200 via DMs. <laughs> so let, let's look at this because it's like, just, that, that's just like a nick nog. That's just like a wigga to be leeching off of women for resources as opposed to earning your own. But this is this is what wiggas do. They, they're like, oh, well, nakers, you know, they get away with not cultivating resources. They get away with bringing nothing to the table. They get away with um, not being providers and not being protectors. So, you know, since I want to be an acre, I'm going to copy that behavior and see what I can get away with too. So here's the text messages, um, or not, I'm sorry, these are Twitter DMs. So here he is. Um, I think the fan, this is the fan's text in purple. Um, she says, I love you. He responds and says, do you really? She says, yes, with a heart emoji. And then he responds, being um, your typical wigga, acting like a typical naker and says, you got some money for me, baby. <laughs> so she says, what you need, King? And he responds and says, what's the most you could give me? <laughs> she responds with a thinking emoji and says, for you, 22 bucks. <laughs> and he says, how about 200 uh, she says, can I know what it's for? What's the hustle king? He says, just me, baby. I got bills. Show me some love and I'll call you just like a typical naker. He wants this woman to support him. Um, she says, your dad is for his gump, fool. <laughs> and he says, 
said I added the fool in there for a little bit of razzle dazzle. <laughs> but <laughs> then she just says, love you though, King. I'm in LA if you ever want to do push-ups on the beach. Lord Jesus, this is a mess. <laughs> So yeah, see, he hangs around too many dust mites. He even speaks patois. Um, so that type of problematic behavior, the dust has rubbed off on him when his broke arse is asking women for money. Um, and here this man is the son of an A-lister, an Oscar winning superstar celebrity. I'm guessing probably what happened is he got cut off from his dad from being a loser. <laughs> and now in true naker fashion, he is a wigger asking women for money. So if that wasn't problematic enough, um, he's also been exposed previously for being an abuser and physically assaulting and attacking his Black girlfriend. So let's watch this YouTube clip and then we will chat. To the incident that police say led actor Chet Hanks to face charges. That's right. Chet is the son of actor Tom Hanks and actress Rita Wilson. KPRC 2's Jacob Rascone has been looking into the allegations and is live now outside Sugarland PD with this developing story. Jacob? Yeah, and a Fort Bend County judge granted that protective order against Chet Hanks, called him a clear and present danger, and said if they did not take action, they believed that Chet would likely abuse again. But tonight we have learned that both Chet and his now ex-girlfriend are taking legal action against each other. Actor and musician Chet Hanks and his girlfriend Kiana Parker lived in this Sugarland rental home when they decided to end the relationship, court documents say. In a lawsuit he filed against her, Chet says she stole nearly $20,000 from him in cash and property. The next day, he says in the lawsuit, she brought three menacing large men with her to the Sugarland house and then smashed him over the face with a pot and cut him with a knife. In her request for a protective order against him, Parker says the three men were simply movers and that he attacked her. In fact, she says Chet physically and verbally abused her repeatedly. That day in Sugarland, Chet, quote, pushed me against the cars and wrestled me around while dragging me across the pavement. She says, quote, I was screaming and asking for help. A bystander called police who tell us, quote, the woman suffered visible injuries to her elbow and arm. Sugarland PD later charged Hanks with assault family violence. A Fort Bend County judge granted that protective order request, ordering Hanks to stay away from Parker, to not communicate with her, and prohibiting him from possessing a firearm. An And an attorney for Hanks told us that all of the claims against him are fictional and completely false. And as you saw in the report, Hanks has actually now filed a lawsuit against his former girlfriend, accusing her of stealing from him. All of the court documents we will summarize and put in a story on click2houston.com. Live at Sugarland PD, I'm Jacob Rascone. Dominique and Chris, back to you. Jacob, thank you. A mess. A mess. So this is this is not what you want, black woman. It's not what you want. This is a Brad who has been around too many nignogs, and therefore he models their thought processes and their toxic behavior. Uh, so most black women are physically assaulted and abused by black men. Um, and this this man said, "Well, I want to be just like the nignogs I know, so I'll do the same." And it's interesting because I'll get a lot of Tyrones who will troll my comment section and who will say, well, look at Chad Hanks and um, look at Jen Willen. Look at look at Jen Hanks and Jen Willen. They both be uh, they both be a uh, black woman. Now. That's what the investment gets to you. And it's like, <laughs> that's not an insult to us. That's not an insult to us. It's like, well, you should be embarrassed because they're mimicking your ass. And I know basic logic and critical thinking is a challenge for you Nick Dogs, but let's try to do it. Let's try to do some basic, basic level critical thinking. These brats surround themselves by nakers, by groups of men who are known to be very low value and who statistically are losers. Um, collectively, they're known to be the biggest culprits of domestic abuse. So what else would happen? What else would happen? Like the old saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. So of course, he's going to start to display those same problematic traits of the men that he hangs around. 
Um, if apes were known for valuing marriage and family, if they were known for being good fathers instead of deadbeats, um, if they were known for cultivating resources, then Wiggas would mimic that. They, they would mimic that. This isn't rocket science. But unfortunately, nakers are only known for your toxicity, your problematic behavior. So anyone who is around you for too long and anyone who is um, impacted and influenced by you um, will mimic that problematic behavior and will eventually start to display that regressive toxic behavior. So anyway, um, I say all that to say, please, y'all stay away from wiggers. Please, please do. They are deeply indoctrinated in Black Assyrian culture and that problematic, toxic behavior. So they'll oftentimes, they'll lack resources just like a nicknog. They'll cheat on you. They'll pump and dump and objectify you just like a nicknog. They'll abandon you with your, your child just like an anchor. They'll also display this erratic and violent behavior, um, oftentimes just like Tyrone because they're surrounded by Tyrone. And this behavior eventually rubs off on you. So if you're um, submerged and indoctrinated and constantly around that same type of toxic behavior and mentality, that's going to rub off on you. So they'll eventually commit crimes. They'll tote, tote guns like Octavius. They'll be violent and abusive. Um, so we know as divestors, it is extremely difficult um, and painful even to escape from Blackistan. So to get to that point and to divest and escape that group think and that her type of behavior and uh, thought process that's prevalent in Blackistan, I'd hate for you all to just um, throw all that work out the window to overcome all that brainwashing and toxicity um, and put in all the work that that takes to escape that, that community and that toxic uh, mentality just to end up with a Tyrone and a Thai body. Don't do it, y'all. All right. <laughs> that is your wig. I know a lot of you guys requested this. So hopefully that is helpful and informative. Um, until next time, I appreciate it. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>